what I'm going to talk about briefly, and it will be brief, and it'll become abundantly clear why it is brief as the talk proceeds. I will deal with the known Mesolithic sites and events in Perth and Kinross, ask the question, why is the Mesolithic proved to be so elusive in Perth and Kinross, look at the knowledge gaps, and then setting out some questions uh, for you to consider for the formulation of a, uh, research priorities and strategies. Right, known Mesolithic sites in, in uh, Perth and Kinross. The first one was uh, part of the, was found during the Ben Laws project. It's at Edramuki Burn. It's situated at 650 meters OD, uh, a Mesolithic pit. Uh, dated, as you can see from the, the radiocarbon date, um, late 7th, uh, early 8th millennium uh, BCE. And there was also some, what are described as putative Mesolithic lithics uh, in another trench at Ben Laws. <clears throat> These excavations uh, were late 20th century, they're in the 1990s, although the project extended into the, uh, the first decade of the 21st century. The two lowland sites that were discovered as part of the SURF project, there was one at Well Hill and another at uh, Cranberry, as you can see, centered around Dunning as part of phase two, prehistoric phase two of the surf project. At Well Hill, we found a Mesolithic pit alignment. You can see the aerial photograph, and I was looking at this aerial photograph, and it seemed to be all, the character of the alignment seemed to be awfully similar to the character of the alignment at Crathes, uh, the Mesolithic pit alignment in Aberdeenshire. And I thought, well, you know, why don't we give this a go? Because it may well be Mesolithic. And being a Mesolithic scholar, particularly conscious about the lack of the known Mesolithic in Perth and in Ross. Uh, fortune favored the brave. We had these, what I've referred to as halo pits. Um, all bar one of the pits is a halo pit. Interestingly enough, you can see it dates from the uh, early ninth millennium, so it's quite early in the uh, Mesolithic uh, epoch. Interestingly enough, there were no lithic artifacts recovered from this monument. And you might think, well, that's strange. The Mesolithic pit alignment in Crathers and Aberdeenshire, there was only five lithics recovered from the Mesolithic context. And the only other pit alignment in the UK is a, a very poor three-line pit alignment at Stonehenge. Uh, there were no lithics recovered from there. So interestingly enough, these places, places were kept clean. There wasn't any um, lithic manufacture, lithic production uh, going on. Uh, the bane of my existence, the, uh, the site at Cranberry, you can see how complicated it is. It dates for everything from uh, the Mesolithic period, uh, early Neolithic, late Neolithic, Bronze Age kissed, Iron Age houses, uh, the remains of an early medieval house. It's all in that trench. Now here you see here another halo pit, uh, very similar to the, uh, the pits and the pit alignment of Well Hill. And in one of the post holes to a late Neolithic post alignment, we recovered uh, a back blade microlith, which is synonymous with the, the Mesolithic period. So it's obviously residual. It's in, it's in that pit. But it does give us proxy evidence for Mesolithic events in this area which substantiates this possibly or probably being a Mesolithic pit. The size of the pit was very similar to the pits at Well Hill. 
Unfortunately, there was no material suitable for radiocarbon dating. <clears throat> the only other unequivocal Mesolithic site in Perth and Kinross was found by the Tay Landscape Partnership in two years of field walking at Freeland Farm. A very, very interesting assemblage of um, a Carnelian rock, which is a, a Chalcedony. Um, and it's, the assemblage is predominantly Mesolithic and predominantly this Carnelian. What's interesting is I'm currently looking at the lithic assemblages at, uh, for the hill forts monograph on the surf project. And Castle Law here, um, there are very, very few lithics, although the mid quite a number of the lithics from Castle Law are carnelian the same as the Mesolithic uh, rocks that were found, uh, work stone that was found at Freeland Farm. Unfortunately, none of the lithics from Castle Law, the Carnelian lithics, lithics from Castle Law, are diagnostic to an archaeological period. So, that is the sum total of the Mesolithic, the known Mesolithic of Perth and Kinross. So why is the Mesolithic proved to be so elusive? A very simple answer. Total lack of research fo fo a focus to find it. Simple as that. As recently as 2013, there was one known unequivocally Mesolithic site in the whole of Perth and Kinross. So the knowledge gaps, well, it's easy to tell you what there is in Perth and Kinross dated to the Mesolithic period. It's more difficult in dealing with the knowledge gaps because everything's missing. Where are the lithic scatters? The pits and pit clusters? The dwellings? How do we locate these sites? And furthermore, the environmental evidence for the 10,000 years in Perth and Kinross is somewhat scant. Um, I may, I'm not an environmental scientist, but I think there may be only one radiocarbon dated uh, pollen core from Strathern, from North Mains. So it's really important that we try and put together the, the environmental history of Perth and Kin Ross. The difficulty is finding three meters of waterlogged ground. At Surf Project, we tried to find it. We went up into the Oak Hills trying to find uh, these waterlogged sites to no avail. They will be there. The problem is finding them. So, lithic scatters. It's important to remember that generally 80% of all lithics are recovered from the topsoil and roughly 20% the balance from features. So, some questions. How should we attempt to locate lithic scatters? Where should we focus our resources? For example, Freeland Farm, the field walking collection from there, what does that tell us? How can we use it? And more importantly, what is the next phase of field work for Freeland Farm? That's very important. Pits and pit clusters. Is there a, a distinctive signature or characteristics of Mesolithic pits and alignments? We know the similarity in the character of the pit alignment at Well Hill and the pit alignment at Crathers. The only two known pit alignments, Mesolithic pit alignments in Scotland. And I say a rather rubbishy one down in Stonehenge. Uh, are there other examples of similar form to Well Hill? that may suggest that they are uh, of Mesolithic origin. And here the, uh, the aerial photographic record comes into play. What do these, we, we find these pits, we find these pit alignments, but what do they tell us? What do they represent? 
bearing in mind for the pit alignments, there's no lithics. So there's something special going on uh, in the vicinity of these uh, pit alignments. And how do they relate? How do these pits and the pit alignments relate to uh, uh, where people were living and where they were working stuff? Well, where are they living? How do we locate the dwelling sites? Most of the dwelling sites found in, uh, in Scotland dated to the Mesolithic period are through developer-funded archaeology. It's serendipitous. What do the dwelling sites look, look, like, uh, look like? What are the differences between upland dwellings and lowland dwellings? How are they distributed? Where are they situated in the landscape? What resources are they close to? We look at the evidence from elsewhere as analogous to where perhaps we should be looking in Perth and Kinross. And if we do find these houses and looking at the analogy of other houses, um, what is the evidence for seasonal use, reuse, rebuilding on the same footprint uh, in the process potentially of uh, either semi, semi or full sedentary occupation of those sites. Palimpsests. What we've got in the, the, the site at Cranberry is, is indicative of the palimpsest, where you've got Mesolithic, on top of the Mesolithic, you've got the early Neolithic, the late Neolithic, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, the early medieval period. Very complicated sites. Um, so from elsewhere in Scotland and in Perth and Kinross, from what little we know, is there evidence of Mesolithic events at data prehistoric sites? If so, how should that inform fieldwork strategies? And I would ask you to bear one, one when thinking about that particular question, I think you should bear in mind one fact from earlier. 80% of Mesolithic lithic, lithics are recovered from the topsoil. How many sites are machine stripped without doing a test pitting survey of the topsoil? How many Mesolithic lithics are stuck on spoil heaps? If I may mention, there was a, a site called Glen Taggart in South Lanarkshire, developer funded archaeology, watching brief, trench stripped. The trench was machine stripped. They then, having machine stripped the trench, realized there was a Mesolithic scatter. They were picking lithics out of the spoil. They recovered a tiny fraction. If they'd done a test pit survey before the machine stripping, there's a fair chance they would have realized that due to the density of the lithics, there was potentially a scatter site there. Very, very important. And like all these things, we've got cost. Archaeology is an expensive business. Um, the environment, we know the, the, the 10,000 year environment of the uh, of Perth and Kinross only in very general terms. Th this, is, this is really, really important. As I say, I'm not an environmental scientist, I have to rely on those people. But what do we need to do to provide a sustainable reconstruction of the 10,000 year history of the environment? And again, that is very, very expensive. Makes excavation much. Summary. Mesolithic events in Perth and Kinross, largely unknown. What we have to come up with is to develop our research priorities, but more importantly, it's easy enough to come up with your research priorities. What we've got to do is achieve them, and we've got to achieve them and fund it. Thank you.